All right, so the uh, last presentation of the day uh, is by, as I said, the fabulous <laughs> Ricardo Covino. I just try and make people blush, that's what I do. So, um, yeah, I guess, <laughs> here you go. Okay. Did you want to use this one or that one? I use this one. It's okay, okay. Uh, good evening to everybody. And uh, I wanted to introduce you to uh, this work in progress. Uh, this work in progress is about uh, a short movie. And uh, this uh, short movie has uh, some quite interesting uh, aspects that uh, uh, can be explained now. Uh, this uh, movie is uh, uh, a movie, um, an indie movie, so a low budget movie. But we have uh, had the chance to use uh, high end products. Uh, what I mean by high-end products, I mean that uh, uh, we used the cameras uh, that, uh, and uh, robots uh, to control cameras and uh, film that uh, uh, are used in uh, normal professional uh, production. Uh, we see that uh, the, main, uh, the main robot camera that we used is called Milo, it's a motion control camera. And uh, there are about only 40 in the world. And I think that uh, their price is about uh, 1 billion and a half uh, euros. So they are uh, quite uh, expensive and prohibitive to common people in the indie movie. <laughs> and uh, so we had uh, this chance of uh, recording this movie in uh, 35 millimeters uh, film. So it can be shown in uh, regular cinemas. And uh, we will uh, aim to a, a high definition uh, uh, final uh, product. Uh, the only way, as we see, that uh, we could uh, afford to do these things, so to uh, have a low budget movie, uh, was to look for cooperation from a lot of people. What does it this mean? That uh, uh, all the people that's working currently on it is uh, volunteers. So uh, we have uh, no money by now, <laughs> no earning money. We are looking for have a, uh, a good uh, return after the present day, after the final product is uh, released. So uh, what's uh, this short movie about? This short movie is about uh, um, a young mother that uh, is dying for cancer, brain cancer. and. Uh, uh, in the last moments of her life, uh, she uh, has uh, uh, effects from uh, morphina and uh, effects from uh, uh, brain cancer, and uh, she is not uh, uh, she is not uh, no more uh, uh, strictly linked to reality. So she has uh, some uh, uh, visions that uh, are not uh, real visions. And uh, these things help her to understand that uh, her time is coming and uh, she has to, to leave this world. This is uh, shortly what the movie is about. Uh, I, now I will explain quickly what this particular uh, camera uh, does. This particular camera, the Milo motion control produced by Mike, Mark uh, Roberts, is a, a camera that's used uh, currently in uh, uh, most Hollywood effects, uh, and uh, it has been used in uh, Superman, in uh, the Harry Potter series, it has been used uh, in uh, Batman Returns, all these kind of movies. What uh, we can do with this uh, uh, camera? We can 
repeat, uh, basically this is the main feature, we can repeat uh, continuously the same camera course each time we want. This can be done with absolute precision. So we are talking about microns. And uh, this can be done in perfect synchronicity with the frames. So we have uh, the film that uh, at that exact frame is uh, uh, the camera is pointing exactly at uh, the same uh, position. This allows us uh, to uh, do a lot of things. What we can do, the first thing is that multipass is uh, uh, very, very easy. So we can uh, shoot uh, this uh, a scene uh, as with uh, a person, then we can shoot it without the person, the same camera movement. And then we can choose if we want the person, we, we don't want the person, we want the person with uh, half transparency, no? Uh, we can do a lot of things. The same uh, thing can be applied in different places. So what we can do in different places, we can record, uh, maybe you have seen in some uh, uh, spots on the TV, we are, we are looking at a car in a place, the camera is making a fly around uh, the object and uh, what we see is that uh, the object is in one place and in the other half of the fly around is in another place. It's always the same car, it's always exactly the same movement but they have been recorded in different places. So everything has been carried in another place and re-recorded. Then we have uh, uh, other chances. Here is a, a shot of the uh, Milo while uh, we were uh, uh, making some um, um, shots in, uh, in wood. You see it's uh, quite big and quite heavy and uh, uh, you, can, uh, <laughs> you can climb it uh, if you want. It doesn't uh, move uh, because it's, uh, it has very powerful and uh, precious engines. engines. And uh, it has also some rails uh, to have uh, it uh, uh, go uh, on and come back uh, with uh, absolute precision. Then we can interact the Milo with uh, uh, 3D. What we can do? Milo not, doesn't only uh, make uh, exactly the same movement uh, each time we want, but has also a numerical output, a digital output. So it does uh, output uh, coordinates uh, for uh, the camera, for the target. Uh, it does uh, uh, send information for uh, the lenses, the zoom we are currently using. And so this can uh, be imported and we imported this data in uh, Blender. And importing this data in Blender allowed us to uh, reproduce the same movements of the camera also in uh, the um, Blender viewport, viewports. So we had uh, the chance to build the scenes in the Blender viewports and uh, reproduce what we wanted and have these things to interact with the real shots. And all these things add the same camera movements. Other effects we can, uh, uh, we can see with uh, the motion control are scaling. This is a quite a fancy feature because uh, you can scale the course you had done and uh, you can change so the size that things look. So I can make a, a, a movement of the camera around this mouse and then make the same movement around the person, scale this movement. So if I uh, then merge the two uh, shots, I can see uh, a person sized like a mouse, okay? Then uh, we can see that uh, um, it can also have a stop motion features. So I decided that this is what I do with the camera and then I record each frame whenever I want, okay? And the final result will be uh, fluent and uh, perfect. Another uh, important feature is uh, the time effects. What is the time effects? Uh, the camera can uh, change uh, the frame rate uh, of the film. So it can change uh, from, uh, I think, about uh, 60 frames per second to three frames per second. And uh, what will uh, be the result? The result will be that we will have uh, a movie in which the person, maybe if you, there's an actor moving, this actor moves 
<coughs> moves, uh, when we play it again uh, at 25 uh, uh, or 30 frames per second, we will see this actor starting in a hurry and then going slower and slower and slower till uh, uh, it seems uh, uh, freezing in time. And uh, this is uh, acquired easily and the actor hasn't uh, to do some strange uh, fake uh, to time slowing, but uh, it's just uh, uh, using the time frame, uh, uh, the time effects uh, to slow down or accelerate uh, the frames per second. So, uh, given uh, these uh, uh, good features of the motion control cameras, uh, we can see now um, how these motion control cam uh, camera movements have been used and integrated in Blender to produce these visual effects. Uh, before uh, showing this, I will show you a short movie of the camera in action. This is in the set. This is the camera. It's quite short. I didn't want to bore you. Uh, as you can see, uh, it has many uh, different uh, turning points. Okay, is like. A, uh, bones structure and uh, it allows a lot of freedom of movements. So you can uh, uh, do turnarounds uh, uh, very st uh, small. Uh, you can uh, also have uh, a lot bigger, bigger movements because uh, it can go on uh, its own rails. Uh, so you, you have a great freedom of movements. We will see after how we used it to uh, solve uh, something that looked impossible that was uh, uh, filming uh, a movement uh, inside a room, a small room, two, three meters per three meters room. The camera couldn't uh, enter in it, but the final result will seem like uh, a closed uh, cube camera room. So, we will see uh, the first effect that we, uh, we are talking about. We will uh, introduce the three effects uh, in uh, this presentation. The first was the wooden arm effect. What we have, we have uh, um, the main uh, actress uh, in uh, this uh, half dream is touching a tree, a tree, this is a small tree. And uh, touching this tree, uh, some uh, branches, branches come out from the tree and uh, envelop her arm and her arm becomes a wooden arm. How we achieved this, uh, uh, this effect? Well. We recorded different shots uh, of the uh, set, one with only the uh, wooden tree, another one uh, with uh, the girl touching the tree, this thanks to this multipass technique. And then uh, we used uh, uh, the um, scene without uh, uh, the actress to have a, a tracking, a, a, a tracking with the voodoo tracker. We didn't use uh, the digital output of the Milo uh, because uh, uh, in this uh, occasion we hadn't uh, an easy way to make uh, measures of placing objects because uh, we were in the wood and so it was not easy to place exactly uh, the tree in uh, the virtual set uh, in Blender. Instead, in the other case, in uh, uh, the faked room, we had the precise uh, measures so we could uh, uh, re rebuild exactly the same thing uh, in Blender and we used the, the digital output of the camera movements of the Milo robot. So we uh, tracked uh, with uh, Voodoo uh, the tree and it was easier without the actress because uh, uh, the actress was uh, disappearing from the scene and reappearing and uh, it uh, gave bad results with uh, um, voodoo tracker. Then we modeled uh, a fake tree, we modeled the hand, the animation of the branches, and then uh, this is uh, this part in Blender. This is uh, um, not a complete part, uh, not a complete shot, it's a work in progress, but we had to send the papers, so <laughs> that's how it was. And uh, we made some tests for lighting sex with Blender Internal Engine and uh, Yafray. 
And uh, we will talk about later about uh, which uh, engine we will use for final rendering uh, uh, of the shots. Then this is uh, uh, a shot from the uh, preview of the composite the final result. This is not the final, uh, uh, we are about 50% uh, of the quality we are aiming to, but uh, we are, each, uh, each uh, image uh, you see here, it's a work in progress, so it's not the final. Also, uh, you will see the trackings are still not perfect because we are still fine tuning them. So this is uh, compositing, uh, a preview of the compositing, and um, in this preview of the compositing, you see that uh, uh, the, this girl uh, here is a half, but you will see after in a, in a short clip that uh, it's a full color. So this is a half transparent girl. It's mixed with uh, the 3D arm made in Blender, and here is the 3D tree made in Blender with branches growing, and uh, this part uh, and this part, uh, instead it's uh, the real tree that we shoot in the, in the wood. So I will show you some. Okay, this, this is one of the Blender files. As you can see, these dots are the uh, tracking of Voodoo. We tried to mix up everything in <laughs> this uh, Blender file to show you. This is the tree and the arm and uh, the branches. And uh, we can see that uh, the animation is synchronized uh, with the movie. We place the movie, it starts from here, the synchronization. And uh, we have uh, everything linked together, okay? Here are uh, branches growing, uh, and uh, uh, we have the animated textures uh, for the arm uh, grow, uh, having uh, changing from skin to bark. And uh, now I will show you a preview clip of what will be the final result. Sorry. This is the 3D arm. Looks a bit dark on this screen. As you could see, uh, this, is, this uh, mask is just uh, the mask for uh, the final uh, output because it will be uh, 2.35 the proportions. It's uh, the movie output, cinema movie output. And so a lot of parts will be cut from the original. <laughs> Uh, 35 millimeters uh, movie. And this is uh, the first uh, effect we are talking about. And um, the other ones, the other ones are uh, realistic moth. Uh, moth is uh, the uh, sister of the butterfly, okay? And uh, we had uh, a moth to behave uh, particularly, so we had a uh, uh, this mod to walk uh, uh, on uh, some places uh, and uh, stop, and then in another scene we have this uh, mod to uh, morph in something else. Okay, so it was impossible to use a real mod, and we didn't want to hurt any <laughs> uh, insect. So we had to fake this mod, and we had to uh, make it uh, as more realistic as possible. Uh, it was not easy, the work is not finished. Uh, this shot is from the internal Blender engine, and uh, it lacks something because uh, we have troubles to have uh, very realistic uh, wings, okay? The translucency of the wings, uh, we, we are not uh, quite still satisfied. And also we have a lot of troubles with the fur, because the fur uh, uh, of the moth is not easy to be reproduced, and uh, uh, we would, uh, we would need, uh, ex for example, uh, to allow the color of the uh, fur be uh, matching the UV mapping of the mesh. And uh, now this is, uh, this is not possible. <laughs> it's just, uh, I, 
<laughs> in our wish list. <laughs> it doesn't matter of a couple of code lines. Yeah. Yeah. As an artist, I say so. Yeah. <laughs> and um, this is so a test. And uh, we have, uh, for example, this mod to uh, walk on uh, this uh, bad uh, uh, edge, this bad rail. Okay. And um, uh, the actors uh, looks at the mouth uh, close uh, close to it. This mouth has uh, a rigging with bones and uh, some shapes for uh, some other movements. And uh, this is where the mouth uh, morphs in uh, um, the, the sorry, there's somebody who's hearted, but it may, does a, a uh, I don't know in English the word, sorry. <laughs> you know when they do blood examination. Okay, that's... A, uh, a butterfly needle, yes. The motor uh, morphs in a butterfly needle. So on the back there's the original shot of the butterfly, uh, that one, <laughs> entering in the veins, and uh, the moth will be, will transform in it and uh, uh, freeze in a special... Uh, position. So uh, this, uh, this, um, this uh, shot uh, is uh, still uh, uh, with a lot of work in progress, but I can show you uh, a Blender file again. Here it is, here is the mod. We have uh, some uh, nodes uh, to have uh, motion blur and depth of field. Uh, we had some troubles again uh, with the depth of field because uh, we had more uh, numerical precision for depth of field, but we had to do some tricks with the color ramp uh, because uh, we, we had the strange results and we had to have uh, uh, an area of uh, blur exactly corresponding to the real shots. So here is the mod with the various uh, um, with the various uh, bones, and if we, uh, it's not it's a work in progress as I, as you see. So there, not everything is working, but he is uh, reacting to the position of of the body, the legs. And then here is uh, the shots we used uh, for this test and. Uh, Again, we have a tracking. This time we have not imported again the digital data and uh, we haven't uh, already done a correct voodoo tracking. So uh, the tracking uh, just for the conference is made by hand. So it's uh, uh, obviously not perfect. I will show you uh, a short movie again uh, presenting this, uh, the, what we are aiming uh, to but not the final result. It's a bit dark again. You see the tracking floating. That's it. So, uh, some troubles, but we are looking for uh, having a realistic mod in the in these uh, shots. Then uh, I will talk you about uh, the hardest of the visual effects we are aiming to. Uh, the room we were talking uh, about before. This room uh, is a, a cube. It's uh, a cube with uh, two, three meters of height and uh, two meters and a half of length and width. And in this room uh, there's the main character and the main character uh, is uh, in two different positions. So it's uh, touching a wall and it is also on the floor. And uh, we could do this using the Milo and shooting two times, one time with the character touching the wall and another time with the character on the floor. We had other shots in the wood again with the same camera movements with the character in other two different positions. What happens is that uh, thanks to this uh, uh, motion control, we have the character that ap appears in four different positions, all these things in uh, a unique camera movement. So 
uh, what we have done. Uh, we have uh, this room which uh, has uh, um, walls and floor and pavement uh, that are, seem like concrete walls. They are not concrete walls. These walls are walls made of moths. These moths are freezed in time, so they are stopped in their movement of uh, flapping the wings. And what happens? Uh, happens that uh, the charter touches the wall and the room disgregates because the moths take life and fly away. Flying away uh, appears the wood of, the second, uh, of the, the second group of shots. So we change the, um, the, the situation, we change the background of uh, what's happening, and we change it uh, switching from real shot to 3D shot to another real shot. The 3D shot allows us to reproduce exactly what was the re first real shot, the room. How uh, we can do it? We did it uh, uh, starting backwards. So what we do? What we did? We made the um, moths. We made a wall of moths. We rendered the wall of moths in high resolution. Then we printed the render, and we used the printer, the render as seen in the uh, real set. So we add the, the exact render that we used in Blender in the real set. Then we had the uh, camera movements in the real set, and then we started again using the same uh, moss on the walls to animate them and to uh, obtain the final effect. Now I will show you uh, the real shots mixed in a preview composition, and then we will see how we add uh, the effect. You see the room, two characters appearing, and then the wood. Again the character in a different position, and again the character in a fourth position. You know, it's a half a dream, this movie, so we can do it. <laughs> then the character wanders in the wood, and then she will go to the tree and will touch the tree, and uh, will happen the other effect we saw before. Fake. This is her real arm with uh, the traditional effect. So it was very hard and we are, uh, uh, this is uh, really a lot in work in progress, uh, this, uh, this effect. So we now have uh, only uh, non-realistic uh, uh, mods and they are not behaving like realistic moths. So what happens? These are the shots. Uh, we did the, all the movement of the camera, uh, changing the walls. So we had uh, a cube, we uh, took out two walls and we made the first part of the movement. Then we put the other walls and uh, completed the movement to have uh, uh, what looks like a closet room, instead it was uh, always half open. We, you can see by this image that it's not quite readable, but it's, uh, it shows that there are a lot of different shots mixed together. Then we made these walls. So these walls are uh, with uh, uh, mods. They are not the high poly mod we used for the other uh, shot because uh, it was, uh, with the four, it was about two million polygons, so we couldn't, uh, we have uh, 15,000 moths in this uh, scene, so we couldn't uh, <laughs> use that uh, moth. We will use the one you see on the right, which is a mid-poly uh, moth with shape key movements, so there are no bones in this one. Uh, 
we controlled their behavior using them as particles with dupliverts. Uh, this was the first approach, but uh, we uh, realized that, that uh, it's not enough because uh, we do not have enough control on the particles. The main uh, trouble is that particles intersect themselves, and then they cannot have independent behavior. We needed the moths to uh, move each one in a different way, each one flap the wings in a different way. So we are having pro some programmers trying to do a script. This scripting uh, allows us to uh, convert the particle basic animation in uh, meshes with IPOS. After that, uh, with these meshes uh, with IPOS, we'll, uh, we will link the uh, IPO data uh, to uh, the movements of the, uh, of the moth. So if uh, it accelerates, the wing flaps accelerate. If it stops, they are closed and they begin to move uh, the legs. And then we will try also to uh, make them change their courses and uh, avoid themselves. That's, that's not easy because we, uh, we are linked to the starting position of the moths because that's the position that's on the printed walls. So we have to start from it. And uh, we will have to, uh, to find a workaround for this thing. Then we uh, make uh, the compositing. Uh, and uh, you see in the, this picture, uh, the floor and the left wall are the real shots, uh, while uh, the front wall and the right wall are rendered in Blender. And uh, they are rendered uh, flattening uh, all the modes. We will also have to um, find a trick to solve the fact that the modes have uh, a depth. No? They are solid, so it will not look uh, uh, exactly the same, but we will find uh, a way. Because uh, we will use uh, Having uh, um, mo uh, motion control data of camera tracking perfect, we will uh, have uh, the chance to use the real walls whenever we want. So we will have a mixing and composite. And uh, the moths that we will be flying away will be 3D moths. But the others still freezed will be the moths in uh, real shots. I will show you. Uh, Again, a Blender file, and here is, <laughs> here is the Blender file, and you can see here. <laughs> you can see uh, animation here lacks a, a, a wall because we wanted to see the beginning. We can, uh, we can switch it on, and uh, you can see the walls disaggregating, but. Uh, this is just the recording of the particles movement. You see there's also a vortex uh, in the other wall. Um, the recorded particles movement is quite uh, not natural because they are all going in the same direction with the same acceleration. But this is what we, uh, we start from uh, to gain the final effort. You see the vortex on the front uh, floor, on the front wall because uh, uh, the girl touches the wall in that point, and starting from that touch, the whole wall begins to uh, rotate. And uh, here is uh, a pre 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 preview <laughs> of uh, what will go in, what will happen. Oh, for this pre pre preview, it's a very very small number. It's about uh, uh, 100, I think. More, no, less, less, less. Subsurfaces that they are one, about 100. I will show you the movie again because uh, we have to explain it. the The red wireframe is the uh, the room. Then we have uh, this uh, preview of the mods. And then we have composited on the background, the, in the beginning, the shots from the real room, and in the end, the shots from the, the wood. So if you start in the, end, in the beginning, you see the real room. 
on the back the mods and then we see the, the wood. Did you hear uh, about blended people from... Yes, okay. yes. Make a scripting system with an SQL database. Yes, we, we haven't uh, uh, looked uh, on uh, blended people in depth because uh, uh, we had... Um, uh, we have not a, a fighting uh, like uh, I saw uh, Blender people can do, and we also need uh, uh, these uh, all these mods uh, to to fly. In uh, um, we have to. Uh, I show you again the movie to explain because uh, it's not easy. We have to um, start from one corner. They have to go away, like a, like a sphere. No, gets them out. So we did it using a wind with a sphere effect on the particle walls, and uh, we are not uh, we are not still with the final result. But we also you looked at the swarm Python script by Macuno, but uh, it had uh, uh, not enough control and it had uh, a very long rendering time, calculating time. So. Uh, it was good for uh, 500 moths, but not for 15,000. And uh, so w we appreciate help. <laughs> we deeply appreciate help. That's you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe. We'll talk later. Okay. And. Uh, Yes, this is uh, uh, a, a fake of what we are wanting uh, to, to have as a final result. So you see uh, in these columns uh, the wood, uh, the real room, uh, the moss in 3D, and uh, the final composite, composite. Rendering choices. Well, we, uh, we, <laughs> we would like to, but it's not possible. Uh, <laughs> And uh, he didn't answer. <laughs> so yes, we would be happy with random man, but uh, we would be happy. But it would be also a big work because uh, programming good shaders for a random man is a very big task, and um, we need uh, a realistic fur, we need a realistic skin, and we are not a random man programmers uh, and. Uh, uh, so it would be the best choice by now, but uh, it's uh, the hardest. Then uh, we are uh, also uh, thinking about the Yafray. Uh, for now, it's the best choice, but uh, um, not definitive. Blender internal, we also considered doing something with Blender internal engine. Why we did it? Because every setting we do in the materials uh, has direct uh, output in the render engine. Instead, of using your phrase, something is missing. So we are not uh, still sure which uh, uh, render engine we we will use. Uh, we are trying uh, to use uh, current uh, scripts for uh, exporting with uh, Axis and uh, Blender to Pixie, but uh, uh, we are at the beginning of this process. What, what, what do you define as photo realistic? What kind of uh, photorealistic uh, is that... Uh, um, what kind of technique? Are you talking about uh, subsurface scattering? Or are you talking about subsurface systems? Or well, wha what we miss uh, more now from Blender internal, uh, obviously, is a uh, good uh, global illumination or radiosity or Monte Carlo tracing. And uh, uh, Yafray aims uh, in that way, but... Uh, uh, no, is everything uh, we cannot export everything directly to uh, your uh, engine does not everything and uh, render man as i said is uh, is a still a big uh, task for us but we will see we will see uh, i think that for blender internal render engine it's uh, the lack of uh, gi and uh, uh, all that uh, gives indirect light for uh, our scenes. Well, we used for, the, for this preview for the wooden arm effect, uh, we used the Yafray combined with uh, Blender's ambient occlusion. 
to give uh, uh, more uh, deep shadows in some uh, areas. So maybe uh, as uh, also Hollywood uh, productions use different uh, engines and they compose it in many, many, many layers. So we can have some layers too. <laughs> uh, so this is the team that worked since now to the digital effects. And uh, as you see, it's uh, still a small team. Uh, we hope uh, to grow for final production because uh, as I said in the beginning, we, record, we shot uh, everything in uh, 35 millimeters. So we will uh, downsize to high definition. Uh, luckily for me, that's <laughs> uh, higher detail is uh, uh, high, higher uh, work, harder work. And, um, but we will output uh, with uh, HD in the final, uh, in the final production. And uh, I would also want to thank other people that contributed uh, to uh, this paper. I cannot thank everybody that's uh, working on this uh, short movie because it's about 40 people. But uh, these are the ones that contributed directly also to uh, this paper. And we also have to thank for the music uh, because we are using uh, music from uh, some professional uh, pe people that uh, let us to use it. So uh, I'd like to ask you if you have any questions. Well, was that render again or is that a picture? That's uh, an internal Blender render engine. Yeah. Ah, yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> we, we, we have some more images, tests from Blender internal. Maybe this one. Yes. Maybe also micro displacement would help a lot. Ah. In, uh, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and. <laughs> so. <laughs> so these these are some shots. This is another shot from the Milo camera uh, during uh, the recording of the shot, the real, real shots. Other is that the, the, how do you call it, the robot thing? Uh, it's called a Milo. It's my micro robots as a, um, you missed the beginning. It's a, there are just 40 in the world. <laughs> and uh, and it, is, it is owned by your company. So no, you have it. Oh. We, uh, here is the director of the short movies over there. You can ask him better. Uh, yes, it's. And um, he works uh, as a, his work is cameraman of this robot. It's, it's just, uh, that's a job and that's enough for him, I think. Enormous, <laughs> but it's, it's a, it's a wonderful toy. It's a wonderful toy. Yeah. Uh, it's a more than one billion dollars toy. So yeah. <laughs> he, wor he works for a company that has it and uh, uh, he, he works good. So they gave him uh, for uh, spare time uh, to use it free. Wow. So we had yeah. this chance to use something that costs thousand euros each day and we used it in some few days to show to everything. But it looks like you need a big truck to move it around because you went to the forest to the yes, outside. Uh, to I think uh, he is still uh, <laughs> crying now for the job <laughs> because it has been a very hard task. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Some saints are still disturbed <laughs> what he said. <laughs> And uh, yes, I showed before a short movie of uh, this Milo uh, moving around. And it's this. We, we have a lot more, but this is. Where is it? It's a mystery. Sorry. No? No? No. It's here. No. No matter. We will open it. Ah, okay.
Not funny. <laughs> It's not showing, but nice. Again. You can manually move the camera around too and it records the motion? Yes. Yeah. It records the motion with micron precision. Perfect. And uh, you can repeat uh, each time you want it. If, if the position is uh, so accurate, how do you know if the next time you put the whole thing in the same position? That yes. Is, I mean, that yes, the I'm machine is more perfect than the humans that use it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we don't need uh, micron precision, but uh, uh, it depends on the work. Because uh, if uh, you work uh, for uh, making a spot of uh, uh, a pen, <laughs> okay, and you have to do the same scene again and again, uh, changing something, changing the lights, uh, all right, you have the same uh, pen in the same position, and if your movement is from here to here, repeated 10 times, you have to uh, have a perfect reproduction. Using uh, the Milo in, uh, this, uh, uh, in this set, we didn't uh, need the micron precision, we uh, needed uh, centimeters precision. In fact, uh, it was more perfect the Milo uh, movement than uh, our reconstruction of the uh, camera in Blender, because in, in Blender we made a camera with perfect uh, uh, dimensioning, and the real one had some millimeters of uh, uh, floating, of uh, uh, benching, uh, banking, so it, it was not perfect uh, our work, not camera movement. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I and uh, the director will be here for all the three days, and uh, also on Monday, but just for relaxing. And <laughs> if you have any question, uh, we are here. Okay, thank you. Will you will help finding a solution for the room with the box to have two million mods flying away. Yes, it would be possible. It would be nice. But how? I don't know yet. <laughs> we will think about it. <laughs> no. Yes. We have a small amount uh, each time. You could use sticky textures for one pass, just use the image you have as a sticky texture on the mods for one yes. small pass to make a transition uh, for the colors on the mod. Yes. Yes. We, we wanted uh, to, to use uh, a, um, an animatic texture for, uh, uh, for example, for. Um, <laughs> Uh, for creating the particles of the mods, so only the ones on the edge of the movement are uh, created. The others that are uh, still freezed in the real scene uh, are uh, unborn, so they can uh, uh, they can be not displayed. So, but uh, it's uh, it's not easy. And uh, the hardest thing is uh, to start from the situation we have, which is a particle generated situation and help all of them move away and do not intersect themselves. They start intersected. That's the problem. You do not see it because the walls are very blurry, so you don't understand that they are mixed, but they self-intersect each other in the start. So we would need them to slowly separate each other, and that's very hard. We started to think also about using game engine and bake the solution, group, having a, a growing size for the collision. Uh, we don't know, we're still working on it. <laughs> what? Swarm formulas. Swarm formulas? Yes, that can calculate that they are not colliding. Yes, uh, we, we, the, the matter is that we start with collided moths. And uh, we saw the, the swarm uh, Python script, and uh, they do not collide each other. So we thought to have a look uh, in depth in the script, but uh, many, many different aspects uh, are involved. So we do not have uh, until now a working solution.
Um, hello. Uh, I noticed on your credits you had Enrico Valenza, and I rem I remember he's doing a really nice project on the Walking with Dinosaurs, but I I haven't heard much progress. Do you know if he's still working on that at all? What's what's happened? Uh, I haven't understood. Who, who he was uh, doing a nice project on the with uh, skeletal dinosaurs in real environments. I don't know if you know. Uh, using Blender. I don't remember. Yeah. What? Amber. Yeah. Yes, Amber, yes. Oh, you... I, 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 sorry, because you moved the microphone so I hear uh, the, the words. <laughs> you was making a project on uh, dinosaurs using the Allosaurus. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. You, uh, the Allosaurus. Ah, okay, sorry. Ah. Allosaurus is very hard for me to understand. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he is uh, still working on his dinosaurs. I know he is working, uh, it's a preview, I don't know, <laughs> on a new short. <laughs> ah, right, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We could run the little pictures of the mod yes. animation. Okay, don't know if this. Tail, and then use them as sprites on the particles. Yes. Yes. Okay, they're talking about moths, so I'll just move over here. Um, <laughs> you're now uh, free for two hours <laughs> uh, till nine o'clock. And at 9 o'clock will be the um, art and movie festival. So if you want to go get some dinner, um, you're also welcome to just hang out here, of course. But um, you have from now until um, 9. And there's beer downstairs now. Uh, very excited about this. Yeah. And uh, so you can grab a beer and, and hang around for a while and then go grab some dinner and come back for the festival. You want to add anything? No. Nope. Okay, <laughs> enjoy the beer. And hang around for a while and then go grab some dinner and come back for the festival. You want to add anything? No. Okay, <laughs> enjoy the beer. And hang around for a while and then go grab some dinner and come back for the festival. You want to add anything? No. Okay, <laughs> enjoy the beer. a while and then go grab some dinner and come back for the festival. Want to add anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the beer. Hang around for a while and then go grab some dinner and come back for the festival. Want to add anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the beer. Hang around for a while and then go grab some